Well, good morning. Today is Wednesday, January 10th, and Jim and I are on the move today, aren't we, Jim? We are. He's got a gift card. He's just burning a hole in his pocket. Yeah. So we'll take you with us on the day today. We'll see what trouble we can get into. Talk to you soon. We get the wild animal in her element. In my element, yes. She's in not She's not very helpful, though, because <laughs> they don't have a 3X, which Jim... Well, how is that, not, how is that my problem, ma'am? Aren't you the order? No, I am not, ma'am. You're not? It just comes. It I just put it comes. out. It just... See, now she'll watch my video today. And then I'll be gone. <laughs> and then she'll be gone. But this is... We're looking for a Michigan, the national championship, but they only have white hats. But because she's such a good friend, she's going to hold us a black hat when they come in. Oh, shh. Tell people that. Oh, don't tell people. That's a secret. Don't tell We're anybody. We're not holding anything. <laughs> she holds it for everybody. <laughs> there she goes. And there he goes. With, with his other Michigan hat. Yeah. Okay, he's supposed to be right behind me with the cart, but he's over here doing the And there you go. Hmm, that man of mine. There we go. Couldn't get it to start. Well, good afternoon. Today is Wednesday. February, no, February, January. <sighs> well, hi, today is Wednesday, January 10th. It is time to sing some happy birthday songs. Today is Gina Corson. It's C-O-U-R-S-O-N, but she said to spell it, to sound it out like or Ourson, Corson, Corson. Gina, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Gina. Happy birthday to you. Cha cha cha. It's C O U R S O N. But it's also Doug Stepser's birthday. Doug is Joan over at Joan's Point of Point. That's her hubby dubby. But so, Doug, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Doug. Happy birthday to you. Cha cha cha. Well, I hope you both have a great, great birthday. Um, as you saw, Jim and I had a little bit of running to do. We went first to Dick's Sporting Goods because he's looking for a Michigan hat for the championship. Um, they didn't have it, but uh, Kathy called me a little after we got home and they had a new shipment come in. So she brought it by us, by the house after, um, after work got out. Here's a picture of the hat. So when she got off of work, she brought it to us, and then Jim paid her for it, naturally. And then uh, we went to Starbucks, and I got my Starbucks drink, which I figured in the points. It's nine points. <laughs> but you know what? I, I felt like a little treat. So I had that, and then I think I seem a little high. Let me see if I bring it down a little bit. That's a little bit better. I need a haircut desperately, desperately. Look at my hair matches my shirt, <laughs> black and gray. See a little bit of black, a little bit of gray. When my hair first started coming in gray, it was like a really coarse, ugly gray. It was like, <laughs> it was so ugly. And it was really thick and like straw-like. It was just, uh, it was awful. But now it's soft and I like the color gray it is. I couldn't even imagine dyeing my hair at this point. I, I never liked dyeing my hair. The one time I dyed my hair when I was a lunch mother way back in the 70s. No, it would have been in the 80s. Yeah, it would have been in the 80s. And somebody had switched the bottles in the store like a prank. And I didn't pay that much attention. And it came, my hair came out so jet. My hair is naturally like an auburn color. But uh, no, it's naturally gray. <laughs> it's just what color it is. I don't dye it to get this color. But when I was younger, it was an auburn color with a little bit of streaks of red because my mother was a redhead. Um... But uh, somebody had switched it with black, and my hair came out. It was almost blue. It was so black. And the kids used to call me Mrs. Scarecrow because <laughs> it was really harsh. And I never would dye it, and I'd end up like, a, I'd look like, they call me at work Peppy, Peppy Le Pew, because I had this big white streak as it went down my head because I just wouldn't. I'm, I'm very cheap when it comes to stuff like that. But I need a haircut because this is too heavy in here. I know I'm going bald. You can see the thin marks. But you know what? I still got a lot of hair even though I'm going thin. But I find that when my hair is shorter, it doesn't show as much. It still shows. But, you know, it's part of aging. It's, it's what, it is what it is. I'm not going to... I still have a lot of hair. And it's just like heavy, if that makes any sense. So I wanted to get a haircut. But I wanted to use the coupons because when you go to Kroger's, 
on the back of their coup on the back of their receipts there's always coupons for little areas and you know little stores in the area that you can get discounts so i thought i'll go and do my grocery shopping today and then uh i will um what do you call it get my hair cut tomorrow and i'll have the coupon <sighs> no it was just a plain white receipt nothing on the back so I gotta pay full price. So I'm gonna go online and see if I can find some coupons online. Because usually whatever I get for the coupon, like if I get a $5 off coupon, then I give them a $5 tip. So they're kind of benefiting from the coupon. But if I don't get a coupon, they only get like a 15%. I know I should give 20, I'll probably give them 20. Which is like $3, so it's still a pretty good tip. But uh, we did that, I did that. And then we went um, to Kroger's and the uh, only one, Thing, we have six containers that you can put your, because um, in Michigan you have a, we have a deposit law for our bottles and cans, and only one dispenser was open. And I have been collecting cans and bottles because I only go when I can get gym drinks diet pop, and then when the kids come over they drink pop. So I had a lot of pop in the garage, from the, and I only buy it when it's on sale because it's ridiculous how much it costs nowadays. But it was on sale that it ended up being like three ninety nine a twelve pack. So I thought, well, okay, I'm going to bring my cans in. Well, what I do is when the bag is full, because we have a bag in the laundry room that we keep them in, like a trash can, and we just keep all the empties in. I had almost $30 worth of cans. <laughs> That's 300 cans, because it's 10 cents a, a thing. So I had like 300 cans that I had to bring back. So Jim and I split them up, and we get into the dispenser for the, the uh, recycling area, and there's only one thing open. So I had to go find somebody. And uh, so Johnny, uh, who's been there, I thought he's been there. I think he got to be there at least 10 years, Johnny. Uh, he's uh, special special needs, but he's been there forever. He's the nicest man. He's so, such a nice man. He's always got a smile on his face. He's always really happy. He really loves his job. And while he was, you know, taking the old cans out to put a new, you know, container in for the new cans, I said, you know, Johnny, you've been here quite a bit. How long have you been here? I was shocked. He's been here 35 years which means he's got to be at least 50 years old because they hire him at Kroger's at 15. But I don't know that they would have been doing that 35 years ago. So I would have never put him in his 50s. Never. In a million years would I put him in his 50s. But like I said, he's the nicest guy. And then when we were at our my particular Kroger's, uh, all of the baggers are special needs. And, uh, and the one that I had today was a new, a new boy, Hunter. And he was so... I mean, I was getting a little impatient because he was taking forever. And I was trying to help him, but I didn't really want to help him because I didn't want him to feel like he wasn't, you know, incompetent or anything. So I would try to find heavier stuff for him because he was like looking through everything to put. Because he said, and he even said, I was told heavy things go on the bottom to form the base. I have to find heavy things to form the base. Looking for heavy things to form the base. And so I started like sliding stuff down that was heavy. And then he'd say, need to get heavy stuff to form to form the base. <laughs> and so I said, well, why don't we put this in? That'll form the base. And so then he, so I started helping him. And then he says, well, that's getting heavy. And I go, if, if I, if you can lift it, I can lift it. And so he said, it's getting heavy, getting heavy with heavy things, making space, getting heavy with heavy. <laughs> it was kind of like Rain Man, but he was the nicest young man. And so I said, well, you know, let's just see how many we can get in here. Let's just put it in the, in the cart. So we got the thing in it, though. So, because so, I brought my own bags in, which I think made it easier for him to pack. Because we usually only have plastic. I don't understand states that say you're not allowed to have plastic bags to carry your groceries in. Yet everything, the milk is in plastic. You know, the lunch meat is in plastic. When you go to the deli, it's in plastic. You know, it's like there's not a plastic going around for a state that's not telling you that you're not supposed to have plastic. So, I have the. Uh, bags that Aaron got from Boston Market to carry out bags. They're really sturdy, heavy bag. So those are the bags I use. So we did that. And then um, I did get my walking in because I started from the opposite end of the store. I started by where the recycling center is. Usually I start at the other end. And so I forgot to get stuff. So I had to keep going back. So I got a lot of steps in because I thought, oh my gosh, I forgot my sugar-free pudding. So then I go all the way back. And, then, and I know I probably shouldn't eat sugar-free because it's got like the additives in it. But um, it tastes just the same as the regular pudding for me, and it's just like a nice little quick little snack, and it doesn't have a lot of calories, and it doesn't have a lot of points. And for the little bit I eat it, it's not going to hurt anything. So I got all my groceries. And like I said, I had like over $30 worth of coupons for my bottle returns. And then we got home, and I put my stuff away. I ate my lunch. I didn't show you. I just had a vegetable platter today. 
I don't know what we're going to have for dinner. I, th I still have a piece of chicken left over, so I think I'm going to have the chicken with some rice. And then tomorrow's my weigh-in day, so it's just going to be me because Birdie's not going. We're, I was um, Facebook messaging with Edie and Kim and Joan yesterday. Oh, my gosh, they really got the storms. They really got the storms. We only had rain. It rained all day. Well, we didn't have a lot. We had a little bit of wind, but not like a really major wind, you know, storm. Just normal rain. I mean, it rained hard at some time, at some points, but not not hard that it was like not normal. It was just like a normal rainfall. But uh, Joan's neighbor's shed came over and almost knocked out her chicken house and knocked down her fence. Edie kept losing power. Um, Kim said that she was hearing sirens for the tornadoes. I thought, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm kind of glad that storm missed us. So we they were predicting that we were supposed to get three or four inches of snow in the morning and it was supposed to melt by the afternoon. We never got any snow. But now they're predicting that we're going to have snow for the weekend. And uh, it doesn't really bother me because I'm going to be in the house anyhow. But anyway, but Denise found out that she's closing for sure on Friday. She was supposedly tentatively going to close on Thursday, but... Uh, some kind of inspection had to be made still before she could get an occupancy uh, certificate. So they've set it up for Friday. So I'm thinking she's moving her beds at least Friday night and then we moving in over the weekend. But then this weekend, we're supposed to get snowstorms. So I don't know what they're going to do. I know they're hiring a mover and they'll probably wait till Monday because I think it's cheaper if you do it during the week than on the weekends. I don't know, but I think so. So she's getting a little anxious because she wants to get into her own house. And then... Um, the, uh, the one place that is kind of like where you go all the time to get to Jim's cardiac rehab, they close the road down until July because they're repairing the bridge over the Salt River, which is, I know it sounds like, oh my gosh, a river. <laughs> it's like a little two-lane bridge that goes over this little tiny river that's not even like my house lot size, just big enough for two cars to get over. And that's how wide the river is. It's just... You know, like if two cars were just side by side, it's it's not it's a very small, it's like a tributary at that point. It's not really a river, but it's part of the Salt River. So they're going to be repairing that, and they they're not predicting that's going to be open until July. And then when you come into this way, and you got to turn either right or left. If you got to turn left, that's where I tell you it's like a death trap. That if I ever had to go there every single day, I would stand out there and I would have a petition for everybody to sign it, and everybody would sign it because it's like. You take your life into your hands to try to turn left out of that sub out of that subdivision, out of the road. Well, now right across, directly across the street, they're building a subdivision where the people are going to come out, and they're not going to put a traffic light up there. Oh my gosh, we need to get out there right now and start getting some signatures. So they need to put a light up there because it's going to be a death trap otherwise. But uh, so I'm just going to spend the day watching some YouTube videos. We're going to go on Jim's uh, thing to see about his, uh, I think Jim is done working. I think he's pretty much decided. So he has a 401k that he can cash in, and then we're going to transfer to a mutual fund. So we'll probably do that this afternoon, look into doing that. And then, um, just like I said, what I wanted to talk about today is just, uh, you know, don't wait. You know, don't don't wait to be happy. As far as your weight loss goes, if, if you need to go off a little bit, go off a little bit. I've been dieting my whole life, and I look back and I'm thinking, you know, probably kept me from being even bigger than I am. But a lot of times it, it deprived me of having the joy of the moment. A lot of times, like when my kids were little, we used to go to the Dairy Queen a lot. I was always on a diet in the summer. I never enjoyed a Dairy Queen. And what good did it do me? I still stayed fat the rest of the year. I should have just enjoyed the moment with my family and had what I wanted and then not gone home and binged on something that wasn't good. Um, if you just wait for things to get better, you'll be waiting a long time sometimes. And is it really worth waiting for? So just be happy now because before you know it, 50 years are going to go by. I've been dieting since I was 20. I'm 73. 50 years have gone by and I'm still the same size, give or take 30 or 40 pounds. And I've had a good life. I've enjoyed every moment of my life. But I've reached a point that I just don't want to stress about it anymore. I definitely want to lose weight. I'm not saying that I definitely want to lose weight. But I don't want to uh, stress about, oh, can I have this or can I have that? Some people have said, you know what? I quit smoking and it was easy. 
even though it was hard, it was way easier than losing weight. I think the difference with that being is like if you have to give up something, like if you give up gambling, if you give up pop, if you give up smoking, if you give up snacking at night, well, that's not a good example, but that's part of the thing. But like anything like cigarettes, tobacco, liquor, any of that stuff, you just give it up. You just don't have it anymore. And so then you're not really tempted because you don't get those urges. But if you go on a diet, you can't give up food. <laughs> You're, you're going to die. You're going to die if you give up food. You can't go without eating food. And it's really hard because, like, when I, I know I kept telling you I'm going to talk about the nutrition. I am going to talk about it, I promise. But she did bring up that most people eat the same foods their whole life. It's not like they deter from what, you know, like you're always going to have chicken or you're always going to have cookies or you're always going to have this. What you have to learn how to do is work it into your daily routine. Work it into uh, not even so much a daily routine, but work it into your plan because you want to make sure there's Denise. She's all eager to move. <laughs> but you have to work it in and just make sure that you, you allot for it, but just don't go overboard. You just have to take your time, enjoy it just for the moment, and then move on. And that's all you need to do. So I'm not going to show you my food today because I've already eaten and... Like I said, I'm just going to probably have some chicken and rice for dinner, which is nothing really that exciting. I'll tell you tomorrow how I did on my way in and just keep you abreast of what everything's going on. So in the meantime, um, live your life. Enjoy your life. Don't stress about things. If you mess up, you mess up. But just move on. That's all you can do. So until we chat again, see you soon.